If you're running a smart home, you'll know how quickly the need for reliable storage adds up, whether it's backups, media libraries, or just somewhere safe for your files. Recently, I came across a compact little NAS that runs entirely on NVMe and SSD drives, and it could be a perfect fit for a smart home setup. But there's one thing you'll want to know before you decide if it's right for you. Hey everyone, my name's Simon and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek, a channel that's all about home assistant and smart home technology. Now I've used various NAS brands over the years and even reviewed a couple of them here on the channel. And while they've all been solid devices, they've also had one thing in common and that is they rely on traditional three and a half inch hard drives, which means larger enclosures, more noise and sometimes more heat. Great for raw storage, but not always the most compact or quiet solution for a smart home setup. That's why the Link Plus LinkStation N2 stood out to me. It's much smaller, it runs entirely on NVMe and SSD drives, and I've been testing it out as a potential option for things like fast storage, running as a media server, and even seeing how well it could integrate into a smart home environment. Thanks to Link Plus for sending me the LinkStation N2 NAS to review here on the channel. As always, they've had no editorial input into this video and you'll get my honest thoughts and opinions about it. So before we get into the details of this NAS, let's just have a quick look at what's in the box. The first thing you notice about the N2 is just how small the box is for a NAS. Opening up, you're met with the unit itself, which really is compact, but we'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. Inside the box, you also get a proper printed user manual, an activation key for the Unraid NAS software, a 60 watt power supply, plus a bag of screws and a screwdriver. What you don't get though, is an ethernet cable, which is something NAS devices usually include, and there's also no drive bay keys either, which suggests that nothing is lockable on this NAS. As for the NAS itself, well, it measures just 21 centimeters wide, 15 centimeters deep, and about four centimeters high. So a really compact unit. If you've got a 10 or 19 inch server rack, this is gonna slot in nicely onto a shelf. On the base of the unit, you'll find two covers for the NVMe drives with room for two drives on each side. The covers already have thermal pads attached and there's also what looks like a ventilation area on the base of the unit as well. On the front, there's a flap that pulls down to reveal the two, two and a half inch drive bays, which you simply lever open and pull the drive sleds out. And then in the middle, there's a USB-C port, which is slightly unusual placement for a NAS, but it's there nonetheless. You also get LED indicators for each installed drive and what appears to be a status bar light. On the right side of the NAS unit, you have a uh, power switch, uh, which also has an LED light on it. Around the back, you've got a decent selection of ports. So from left to right, we've got an audio jack, which isn't something you usually see on a NAS. Uh, followed by that, you've then got a reset pinhole. You've got a HDMI port. You've got uh, a single USB-A 3.2 port. And then you've got two USB-A 2.0 ports. You've got a 10 gigabit RJ45 port. And finally, you've got the power connector. So in terms of specification then, well, the N2 is powered by an Intel N100 CPU with four cores and four threads. It's got a base clock speed of two gigahertz and boosts all the way up to 3.4 gigahertz. It comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, which is soldered to the motherboard and not upgradable, along with 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. For drives, you've got four M.2 2280 NVMe slots and two two and a half inch SATA SSD bays. Connectivity includes the 10 gigabit ethernet port and a 10 gigabit USB-C port. You've got that three and a half mil audio jack, a HDMI 2.0 port, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and two USB 2.0 Type-A ports. Fully loaded, this compact NAS can hold up to 48 terabytes of storage across all of its bays. 
Now the Link Plus N2 comes with the starter version of Unraid as its operating system. You'll find a registration card in the box, but you can try it out for free for 30 days before deciding whether you want to keep using that. I already run Unraid on my main NAS and whilst it may not be the flashiest operating system, it's reliable and does its job very well. The big advantage with Unraid is flexibility. In an array, you can mix and match drives of different capacities in the same system. That's exactly what I'm doing here. So I've got a couple of one terabyte NVMe drives. I've got 512 gigabyte drive and I've got a 256 gigabyte drive. Installing those is a simple process. You slot them in, no need for any kind of screws here. The N2 has these really clever catches that just attach to the end of the NVMe drives and keeps them in place. Remove the film from the thermal pads and replace the covers. I also added a one terabyte SSD into one of the front bays, which is just a case of screwing the drive into the sled, sliding it back in and making sure it's seated properly before closing the lever. Once that's done, it's simply a matter of powering on the NAS, letting it go through its initial setup and then following the instructions in the manual. Normally, you just open your browser and head to tower.local where you'll be prompted to log in with the default root account. Now, I won't cover all of Unraid's features in this video. There are plenty of deep dives already on YouTube, but I did set up a RAID array across my disks with the largest drive acting as parity. Unraid then builds the data onto that parity drive, which takes a little while, but once it's done, you can then create your users and shares on your NAS. As a best practice, you should only use the root account for administration. So I created separate user accounts for day-to-day -day access. I then set up a shared folder on the array and was able to connect to it from my Windows PC through File Explorer. Now, it's worth noting that the version of Unraid that was pre-installed was version 6, but I was easily able to upgrade to the latest version 7 without any issues. So to test media performance, I also set up Jellyfin to stream video content from the N2. Installing it was straightforward thanks to Unraid's huge collection of applications, most of which are lightweight docking containers. Once Jellyfin was configured, I was ready to start streaming movies directly to my PC. Now, everyone uses a NAS differently, so keep that in mind when I talk about performance here. Personally, I use mine to store video footage from my YouTube channel, family photos, documents, and to run Docker containers, plus my Home Assistant demo system for testing new releases. When testing the N2, I wanted to see how well it handled those kinds of tasks. My PC is connected to it over a 10 gigabit ethernet connection, so in theory, I should be able to max that out when transferring files. To put that into perspective, the maximum theoretical throughput is about 1.25 gigabytes per second under perfect conditions. In reality, with SMB file copies on Windows 11, you can expect anywhere between 800 megabytes per second and 1.1 gigabytes per second. Of course, the drives you install make a big difference, whether they have a cache and how big that cache is, what generation those drives are, and how fast those drives are as well. They all make a difference. For smaller files like images, transfers were so fast that sometimes the copy dialog didn't even appear. With larger files like my 4K footage from my YouTube videos, I was hitting around 900 megabytes per second, which is pretty respectable. When moving bigger files in the region of 40 or 50 gigabytes, you'll see speeds drop once the drive cache fills, but that's to be expected. Copying files back to my PC, which also uses NVMe storage, was just as quick. Streaming performance was also pretty impressive. I tested it with 4K footage from my YouTube videos, starting out with one stream and then opening a second in another browser window. Both of those played flawlessly and looking at the Unraid dashboard in the background, I could see that the CPU, whilst it was working harder, it still had plenty of headroom left. So I pushed it a little further with the third 4K stream and at that point, I think it's fair to say the M100 CPU was close to its limit. I suspect a fourth stream probably would have maxed it out and potentially caused some throttling. That said, if most of your media is 1080p rather than 4K, then the N2 should comfortably handle a lot more simultaneous streams, really without breaking a sweat. 
Now, one of the other things I tried on the N2 was setting up Home Assistant. Again, this is just an app on Unraid, and as you can see, it's all up and running. It just took a couple of minutes to get to this point. It just goes to show that you could quite easily build this into part of your smart home setup running home assistant a media streamer you know you name it you know you can have this as quite a powerful unit doing more than just be a simple nas device you can pick up the link plus link station n2 without drives for about 435 pound and that includes about 50 pound for the unraid license which isn't too bad really of course you'll need to factor in the cost of the drives themselves just like any other NAS. I've put a link in the description down below if you want to check it out. So what did I think of the LinkStation N2? Well, it's definitely an interesting unit. This is the upgrade to the N1 and Link Plus have made several improvements based on user feedback. If you can take advantage of the 10 gigabit ethernet connection, I'd certainly recommend this version over the previous one. And obviously you get the upgraded CPU, which is another big plus. Unraid is a great choice for the operating system. It's easy to set up, has a friendly and helpful community, and offers a huge range of apps if you want your NAS to do more than just store files. The N2 is very well built. It's compact, quiet, and looks great in a server rack as part of a media center setup or just sat on your desk. As you've seen in the review, it handled multiple 4K streams in Jellyfin without issue, and I could easily install something like Image to back up all of my photos, saving on cloud storage costs as well. Whilst the RAM is soldered at 16 gigabytes, for most users, this is plenty unless you're running lots of virtual machines or many heavy Docker applications. That said, I do have some mixed feelings about this. Hard disk based NAS devices offer very large storage capacities at relatively low prices. NVMe drives are still about three times more expensive for the same capacity and the maximum storage isn't quite there yet for consumer level needs. So if you're buying the N2 primarily as a fast storage device, it can get expensive. But to be fair, that's true of any NVMe based NAS. Overall, Link Plus have done an excellent job packing so much into this small, cool running unit. It's a smart looking form factor at a reasonable price for what you get. Let me know in the comments what you think of the LinkStation N2. Would you consider a fast NVMe NAS like this? Or if you have any questions about it, then drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps others find it. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.